This is the final video in our six part series on an introduction to programming. In this video, we look at file handling. So in the context of programming, file handling broadly refers to the opening, closing, reading to and writing from files by your program code. We can present you with a couple of very quick uh, flow diagrams to overview the two main things you have to be able to do. That's write data to a file and read data to a file. So writing data to a file involves opening the file first for either creating, overriding or appending, then writing some code to actually send that data to the file and then closing the file. Reading or searching for data from a file is a little more complex. We still start by opening the file for reading data. We then would need to assign a Boolean variable to false to indicate that we've not reached the end of the file. We then enter an iteration, a while loop, saying while the end of the file is false and we've not found what we're looking for, then read the data from the file if the data we've read matches what we're searching for, then assign that data for some variables or output to the screen. And of course, check if the end of the file has been reached and if it has set that Boolean to true. Once we've found the data, we've reached the end of the file, we're done. And we then once again, close the file. So to explore the various operations you need to be able to use, we're going to use this program you see on the screen and we're going to start with how you read data from text files. So this program asks for the name of a character and then it looks up the name of that character in a text file and it outputs all of that character's attributes. In this case, their health, their stamina and their hunger, which are integers. So you can think of this as a little text based game. You can see on the left the code for this program and you can see on the right the text file that stores the information. You can see it stores the information in a very specific way. We have the name of a character, Boris, followed by three numbers, 34, 57 and 12, which represent the health, stamina and hunger for the character Boris. Our program, as you can see, requires the items from the text file to be in a very certain order. We require the name to be in the text file first, followed by three numbers, and those numbers have to be in the right order. The first one's the health, the next is the stamina, and the next is hunger. This structure that's very precise and has to be followed in the text file is known as data dependency. If the order of these were changed around the text file, the computer program would give undesired output or may not even work. So first we ask the user which character they would like to output. So we have a simple input command, which character you'd like to output. They type in the name of the character and that gets stored in the variable character. We then reach the first of our file handling operations that you need to be aware of for the exam, and that's open. So we have a line here that says f equals open characters.txt comma r. And you can see the open command takes two parameters. The first is the name of the file it wants to open. In this case, characters.txt. The second parameter it takes is what we want to do with the file. So in Python, when you say R, it means we want to open the file for reading. The next thing we do is set a Boolean variable to false to indicate that we haven't yet reached the end of the file. And this is important. All text files and file handling operations have a way of telling when they've reached the end of a file. And it's quite common to check whether we've reached the end. We then iterate through the file while we haven't reached the end of the file. Now, we will change this end of file flag to true later on if we discover we have reached the end of the file. We then have four lines of code which read four lines from the text file, one after the other. 
each line from the text file is placed into an appropriate variable. So we see name equals F, and that was assigned earlier as being a pointer to character.txt. F.readline, so read a line from character.txt and place it into the variable name. You'll notice on the end it has this dot strip, which is a Python thing. And that's because every time you were entering a line of text into the text file, at the end you were pressing enter. Now, although when you press the enter key on a keyboard, you don't see anything, behind the scenes it's actually storing a character, which represents the fact there's a new line. So we strip this new line character out, so we just get the text Boris. We proceed with that for all four lines, reading in the three numbers and storing each line of that text file in health, stamina and the variable hunger. We then now check if the character we read in from the file is indeed the one we're looking for. So was the name supplied at the beginning of this program Boris? And if it was, it matches, we then print out the contents of the variables. We've essentially extracted them from the text file, put them into variables which are being held in memory, and then printed the contents of those variables out to the screen. If the name we read in contains no data, then we know we've reached the end of the file. And if this is the case, we set our end of file flag to true, which will cause the while loop to terminate. And then finally, we close the file. So we say f dot close. Remember f is pointing to characters.txt. It's our link, it's our file handler, which is connecting our program to our text file. So we say file.close. Now this is really important and a step that candidates often forget in the exams. It's also often a step that will gain you an easy mark. Once you're finished dealing with a file, you should close it and free up the resources. So that's reading from a text file, but how do you use file handling operations to write to a text file? Well, we've got a slightly different program here. The first thing you can see is we get the user to input the details for a character and we store those in variables in memory. So we ask the user for the name, health, stamina and hunger of the character and we're storing the values entered into four variables in memory. The next thing we have to do is to create a connection or a link between our program and our physical file characters.txt. So like before, we say f equals open, and then we supply two parameters, the name of the file we want to connect to, in this case, characters.txt, and now we're supplying the second parameter, a. And a means we want to append or add to the end of that file. Another option in Python is to use the parameter w. Now this would create a brand new file or overwrite the contents of an existing file. Now we've gathered the input from the user and we've created the link to characters.txt and told it we want to append to the end of the file. We can now write the contents of each variable held in memory onto a new line into the character text file. And you can see we do this with f.write. You'll notice I'm writing a variable plus slash n, and that is a new line character. So it's as if you had manually entered the information and then pressed enter. Just like when we read to the file, once we're done, we close the file and you do f.close. Here's a brief summary of the various Python commands that we've been going over for file handling. Now, although the examples we've been showing you have been from Python, you will notice that very similar commands exist in other languages you may have been using. So here we see examples from Visual Basic and you'll notice, although the syntax and the commands are slightly different, you still need to open the files for reading or writing, you need to interact with the file in some way, and then it's always good practice to close the file afterwards. Finally, let's just look at the pseudocode that OCR will actually use in your exams when reading and writing from a file. 
and that way you won't be too thrown if the syntax looks a little different in the question to what you're familiar with. So in the exam, open read will be used to open a file to read from, while read line is used to return a line of text from a file. The program on the left now makes X the first line of sample.txt. End of file will be used to determine the end of a file. And the program shown on the left now will print out the contents of sample.txt. Finally, open write will be used by the exam board to open a file to write to, while write line is used to add a line of text to the file. In the program on the left now, we're making hello world the contents of sample.txt, as any previous contents will have been overwritten. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How do you read from and write to a simple text file? We're just going to go over a quick note now about the language guide that's used in your external assessments. So remember, the exam board don't know what language you've been learning to program. So exam questions might use an unfamiliar syntax. Towards the back of the specification for both AS and A-level, you'll find Appendix 5D, where the exam board state, the following guide shows the format pseudocode will appear in the examined components. It's provided to allow you to give learners familiarity before the exam. Learners are not expected to memorize the syntax of the pseudocode, and when asked, may provide answers in any style of pseudocode they choose providing its meaning could be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer. So although you don't have to answer in the specific syntax shown in the exam papers, so you are familiar and not thrown in the exam, it's worth downloading a copy of the specification and printing out the appendix. If your school is a Craig and Day subscriber, then ask your teacher for a copy of our student learning and exam support guide. This provides all the information you need in a set of handy reference sheets.